Okay, so we're gonna look at um, exporting our dense mesh or our dense point cloud, sorry. And, you know, maybe we, maybe we just wanna clean this up a bit more. So bear with me, I don't think we necessarily need this. You know, there's some erroneous data that doesn't look good. So, you know, if it's erroneous and it doesn't look good, then there's no point in having it. Um, maybe a little bit here, you know, not, not too much again. And if, you know, imagine just, to, imagine if you actually cared, then you could do a great job kind of cleaning this up with the tools that I showed you. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's good enough for our photogrammetry for this exercise. Yeah. These roofs, oops, we're losing it. Center view. There we go. I just got out of ortho and it seemed to, it seemed to fix things. Um, these pitches don't really seem to be necessary. And I think that's, that's the most I'm going to, that's the most effort I'm going to put into this. Again, you could probably now like redo your uh, texture, your OBJs, your meshes, but um, that's entirely up to you and how you want to proceed. So again, let's just save this because we've made some more changes now. And we're going to just do a quick test export and see what the file size is. Because if we're going to, if we're doing a point cloud output, the way the workflow we're going to do is we need to bring this into Sketch, uh, Sketchfab. And Sketchfab has the, a file size limit of 50 megabytes. And we go to uh, the bottom here, we go to Reference. Uh, essentially, this works in two different coordinate systems. Like there's the coordinate system that we're probably all used to, which is, you know, just meters or feet or inches, which is something that's common in AutoCAD and different programs. Uh, but in other programs like GIS programs, you actually work with world coordinate systems. So there's meters and then world, and that's because the earth is a sphere, you know, quick little sidebar tutorial here, because the earth is a sphere and we're working on a two dimensional screen, we're making everything a flat surface. So there's a question about unwrapping a two dimensional, a, a three dimensional sphere into two dimensional plane. And so that's why there's these different um, coordinate systems essentially that accommodate for that to different levels of sort of fidelity based on where you are. So, you know, WGS 84 is good, but like, uh, for instance, NAD 17 M is for Toronto. Um, there's different ones for London and it's because there's different levels of distortion. You want to pick one that's like local to your area. With all that being said, um, with that sort of digress out of the way, change your coordinate system to local. Uh, I mean, this is probably what we'll be using for the most part, unless we're doing like drone photography. Once you do this, you can click OK, and uh, things will start exporting better. So we're going to go to File, or you know we can actually, because you might have multiple different dense clouds and stuff following the next couple steps, but we're going to start here with Dense Cloud, and we're going to do Export Dense Cloud. There's tons of different file types. I find that... I find, sorry about that. I find that PL, uh, PLY is the best um, to, to export. And then we can just name it a uh, laneway. And there are some things we need to work with here. So for starters, uh, make sure your coordinate system is set to local. Mine is defaulted as local right now, but if you set it to WGS, um, which is the other option, it'll actually get messed up when you export it. So make sure this says local coordinates. Then make sure you have save point colors checked off, which should be by default. Convert colors to 8-bit RGB. Yes, checked off. That'll make it so your file smaller. And then something you might have enabled is called save point normals, but actually we're gonna wanna disable that because uh, we don't need our normals and that's gonna make the file probably like 30% bigger. So we're trying to just squeeze things down as small as possible. I'm gonna press okay. Just like that, it's been exported. We go to our desktop and if we go to properties, okay, so we're at 54 megabytes, which actually isn't that bad to begin with. I Some of my other files uh, were 200, even a gigabyte. So you, this, this is, a, this is a, a, you know, this is actually quite a small file, all things considered. And when you look at it, you probably understand why, because <laughs> we really didn't grab any more data than we needed. Um, but with that being said, we need to shut off four megabytes and there's a ton of ways you can do it. You know, you could just start ripping things off like that. Uh, just deleting things like that. But let's say for instance, we just want to reduce the density 
um, you know, because like if you go here, it it doesn't really matter how dense this is when you're all the way out here, right? This is all looks like a solid surface. Only once you start to get this close will you really start to see things. And that's a calibration thing that we're going to want to work on. So we're going to go to Tools, Dense Cloud, Filter Dense Cloud. And so this is essentially just going to change the spacing. So right now it says point spacing in meters, so 0 0.0007. And uh, this is sort of like calculated, um, calculated that. So we can maybe just press OK for starters. Uh, when it says replace default dense cloud, let's just say no for now. And that'll make it so there's two dense clouds that'll appear here. We lost we lost a couple a, a few tens of thousands of points here, um, and I mean frankly that's probably enough for this. If we just export the points again as a quick test, we'll probably see that it's enough. But I, I do want to go through the exercise a bit more. Okay, so it actually didn't really do anything. Okay. So again, we can just refer to these two things. And this is what we were at previously. So I'm just gonna delete this one and start from the top. Remove dense cloud, yep. So this is our original dense cloud. And now uh, we'll go back to tools. And then we'll go to dense cloud, filter dense cloud. And again, this is the default, um, 0 0.007. So let's just change this to 0 0.015. Click OK, replace dense cloud, no. And we can just refer to the point count here. So 3871, we'll see what comes in next. Okay, so just like that, we've cut it in more than half by um, spacing it out. And frankly, you, when you're this far away, you can't really tell. When you get this close, you can start to tell. So it kind of depends. Let's just compare the two. Kind of depends. I bet you when we export this now, it's going to be like 30 megabytes. And I think we, we can probably get it a bit better than that. Uh, we could probably increase the size a bit to make it so it looks better because now it, now it is a bit too sparse. So let's just go to properties, check. Yeah, 18 megabytes. So we kind of overdid it. I'm just going to delete this, remove the dense cloud back to this one and we'll go to tools, dense cloud, filter dense cloud. So with that being said, we could change this to uh, 0 0.01. Let's see what that looks like. If you click yes to replace the dense cloud, by the way, like you can't really undo that. Um, it just doesn't for some, like you'd have to then rebuild the dense cloud from the previous part of the workflow. Okay, so that one, there we go, there goes that one um, to compare the two. So this is looking like a pretty pretty good scale. So we're gonna export. Again, you can also set the diameter of these points in another program, uh, whatever visualizing program you want. So, you know, you can basically fill in, fill it in afterwards. So laneway four, 35 megabytes. That's pretty good. Um, but frankly, I'm still going to get it a bit better. You kind of get the idea, but I'm going to do it one more time just so it's, you know, as good as we can have it. Same exercise. Tools, dense cloud, filter dense cloud. So 0 0.10, and I'll now do this to 0 0.00. Okay, so to compare the two, it still looks relatively the same. And we're just gonna to go to export points, desktop, anyway, file, same settings. And then we go to properties, and we're at 44 megabytes. So there we go. This thing is this thing is good. This is all done. I'm gonna save this. Now we have the dense original copy, which is right here. And we also have the one that'll just fit under 50 megabytes, which is uh, good stuff. So the next thing we're gonna look at is exporting meshes. 
Um, so for that, we're first going to just go to our mesh and take a look at, take a, uh, see if we're happy with it. So this is our textured mesh. I might actually rebuild this um, just because I am pretty dissatisfied with, with this part. So to do that, now I'm just gonna go back to our original dense cloud now that I had deleted everything like that. And I'm gonna build the mesh from this dense cloud. So workflow, build mesh, dense cloud. Make sure dense cloud is selected if you're following along, which you probably aren't because you don't have this file. You wanna just click okay. And sit tight, this will probably take five minutes. So now that the mesh finished again, I'm just gonna look at the shaded view of it and you can see that it's now adjusted to accommodate for the point cloud. And that means one more time, we're just gonna now have to rebuild the textured model. So we're gonna do workflow, build texture, same thing. Okay, so I just rebuilt the texture really quickly and yeah, it's looking, it's looking good. It's looking better than it did before anyway. Okay, so now we're going to export this file. Um, this will be our mesh, the mesh equivalent. And I do want to add, like, we're going to put this into Blender and we're going to use Blender to basically decimate what they call decimate the mesh, which will basically make the mesh less dense. Um, this is only if you really want to upload it. Otherwise, this is a pretty light mesh if you're just using it in, like a working file. Uh, but for online, it's a different story. And you could do that here. You could go to tools, mesh, decimate mesh, but Blender is good because you can do it procedurally, um, meaning that we can see how much we're removing before we actually commit to it. And so it's a lot more receptive that way. Uh, and we have to export it out of here anyway, so we might as well take an extra step and put it into Blender. So we'll go to this 3D model here. And remind you, just this is a medium quality. Everything about this is medium quality. Um, so something just to appreciate. Yeah, so we'll go to export model. There's tons of different file types. Um, GLTF is like really good for doing things online. Uh, but we're actually going to start off with an FBX because that's the best way to get things um, basically between modeling, modeling programs. Um, so I'll name this uh, laneway. If I can spell laneway mesh. It's great. We don't need the cameras. Unless you want to do something else, like some animating or something like that, then you could you could recreate your walking path that way. Markers, uh, we don't really need those. Vertex colors, yep. Export texture, sure. And yeah, so there we go. I mean, this we don't even have any markers, but either way. So I'm going to press OK. And that was quick. In the meantime, I'm going to open up Blender, which is just right there. So here's Blender. I'm just going to, if you don't know Blender, there's tens of one minute videos that'll explain the process that I'm trying to do, but you can probably just follow along. I'm going to press A to select everything, press delete to delete everything. I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go to import, and then I'm going to go to FBX. I saved it to the desktop, so it's right here, laneway, mesh, FBX. The settings here are probably fine by default. Um, we might realize now, so it says like, uh, Y is up. So let's see if that's the correct orientation. Cause that's what, that was the orientation I suspected was in the, uh, in Agisoft. So this thing is just loading right now. And it loaded in and it was not the right orientation, but that's fine. I'm just going to select it, rotate X 90. Yeah, that's good now. And it has this peculiar looking material, but uh, if you just press Z and go to material preview, let's see if it can generate the materials. There we go. So already, I mean, this is a pretty powerful program if you just wanted to, um, you know, do some animation and stuff like that, or if you wanted to work locally. This is just material preview. I think it could actually, I think it's actually a bit better than that. If we go to uh, actual rendered mode, maybe I'll go into, um, and you just gotta get familiar with Blender if you wanna do this, but you go to your render engine and change it to cycles, which is like the more intense render engine between the two that actually will calculate things. 
and there's no lights in the scene right now so like that's that's a factor and it's also working on my CPU but anyway that's the uh, I guess that's beside the point because it's clearly um, the textures are clearly there so that's great so now what we want to do and we can also we can also edit some things here like I didn't have to re-export the mesh and stuff like that I could have uh, I could have just selected it here I'm just gonna go into like ghosted mode so I can select everything I just selected the vertices um, I mean you can just keep doing that if you want Anyway, with that being said, we can go to the, we have this thing selected now. We're going to go over to this little wrench here, modifier properties, add modifier, and then looking for decimate. Okay. And this is the great thing about decimate in this program in Blender. So we can kind of get really cozy up to uh, this edge, for instance, we can go to wireframe mode, or we can actually just, uh, we should be able to overlay our wireframe over top of our rendered view here. So let me go to object, viewport display, wireframe. So here's our wireframe. And there's different modes to uh, subdivide or to decimate. So for instance, it's going to say, for instance, planar here. If I select planar, it's going to look for everything that's relatively on the same plane. And it's going to try and make it one. The reason why I don't like to do it often is because it kind of messes up the texture and it also can kind of mess up your file a bit. Um, but you know, in an ideal scenario where everything's kind of cleaner geometry, then this would be, this would be great. And I mean, there's probably also ways in Blender where you can rebuild this entire thing in perfect quads, uh, you know, as opposed to being this kind of nasty geometry, you can probably rebuild it all. Um, but I don't know what that would do to the textures. Anyway, so you can see how it's started to adjust things, um, which is fine, but it's actually, that's kind of actually bad geometry. So that's kind of why I don't like doing planar. Um, cause it's not, it's not resolving it enough for it to be worthwhile. And you can see it's starting to stretch textures and stuff. So let's maybe try collapse. I mean, collapse might actually mess up the texture too, but maybe not as much. So let's change the ratio to like 0 0.6 and see what that looks like. There you go. So we only have 60% and you can see here. So here's our face count. We only have 60% of the points we started with. Going back to one, you can see, or you can go to 0 0.5 and you might be surprised by how far you can push this. I mean, like that's still pretty great, right? Um, let's take it to 0 0.25 and see what that looks like. So, and it's a, it's a trade-off. I mean, like we can disable this for a second to see the difference. Right? So now you can see like there's the original line, for instance. And then there's the decimated line. Um, but frankly, I mean, uh, you know, these things already aren't perfectly planar and this is kind of just the, uh, like, the aesthetic it's the uh, photogrammetry aesthetic where things just are kind of like, kind of wonky. So I'm gonna push it even a bit further. So yeah, so 0 0.2, that's pretty great. And uh, this thing is good to go. So now we've got both of our mesh and from the previous steps, we also have our point cloud ready to be uploaded.